Almost two years now into the pandemic, the state is still trying to grasp just how much the school closures and remote learning set back New Mexico's children. KRQE News 13 investigative reporter Gabrielle Burkhardt spoke with parents, teachers, and the PED to find out where we stand. We just love this area. Living in the East Mountains, it's more quiet, it's more slow pace, has its draws. It's where friends Amy Owen and Jane Gamble are raising families. <laughs> Their children attend A. Montoya Elementary, part of Albuquerque Public Schools. But over the past two years, life in the pandemic has highlighted some of the drawbacks for rural communities. Oh my gosh, I could just like cry right now, and I'm not exaggerating, but it was so hard. Owen has 10 year old Claire in the fourth grade and six year old Theo in the first. It was his kindergarten year, and it was like on a computer. And kindergarten is definitely not conducive to online. School. Do you feel like they suffered at all, whether that be socially, academically? Yeah, I think, you know, they're definitely behind academically. Um, socially, I think, you know, they're also behind too. The two friends experienced what parents all over New Mexico experienced. There were days in which I could not get him logged in. He was not going, doing well socially. Or emotionally, um, he was struggling. He was isolating himself a lot. Jane Gamble's fourth grade son, Caden, has autism and struggles with changes in routine. His individual learning plan, which includes speech and behavioral support services, often went out the window. With the internet connection going in and out, if we had a storm, wind, whatever, there was a lot of days in which I said, shut it off, we're done. We are going to go play. There's no question pandemic school closures were tough on most families. It's why this year the focus has been on keeping kids in the classroom. And now we're getting a glimpse of just how far behind New Mexico's school children are. A recent Legislative Finance Committee report states COVID related school closures have cost New Mexico students anywhere from four months to more than a year of learning, with younger and at risk students suffering the worst. National data from the Northwest Evaluation Association, which includes New Mexico, shows the average student performing 3 to 6 percent worse in reading and 8 to 12 percent worse in math compared to how students in the same grades measured pre-pandemic. There's two groups of students that I'm particularly concerned about. The first is early childhood, anywhere from pre-K through third even fourth grade, that's a primary grade band where learning to read, early mathematics, those things in academics and socially are very much impacted. The second, though, is actually at the very high end, and those are our juniors and seniors. Dr. Gwen Perea Warnament is the Deputy Secretary of Teaching and Learning Assessment for the New Mexico Public Education Department. She's also a mom of a high schooler. Yeah, it's impacting us all. The PED oversees 89 school districts and nearly 50 charter schools statewide. In 2020, the state skipped standardized testing for students. And this fall, testing is encouraged but not required. Does the PED have a pulse on how New Mexico kids are doing academically this year? No, uh, I should say yes and no. She says schools have a lot of discretion when it comes to curriculum and how they handled learning during closures and then COVID-related quarantines. Teachers Teachers are juggling a lot, expected to check in with students both in and out of the classroom. Teachers are just really stretched thin right now, and I can tell because there's less communication. With many campuses still off limits to parents during class hours and schools cutting back on in person traditions, tack on staff shortages, and parents say communication isn't what it used to be. Our teachers are stretched so thin, and there is a lack of substitutes. We get the emails asking for subs. So how well a student is doing this year can really depend on how the pandemic impacted their home or classroom, highlighting disparities that already existed. There's so much difference among students, much less among schools, much less among districts, right? So I think it's important that we just simply make a generalization and say, Okay, we know we're going to be behind. That's actually what worries Owen the most. Sometimes I worry that, like, my kids are going to grow up in a world that's a lot more unequal because there's going to be kids that are just so left behind in all of this, and there's going to be kids that just didn't skip a beat. So there's going to be more of that gap 
in education. New Mexico has shifted its pandemic response from mandating closures for schools with COVID cases to now funding more COVID testing so kids can stay in school and engaged in activities. What can we do better here for our kids? We need to vaccinate as much as possible. That is a huge strategy to moving our entire society. But I think another maybe more personal answer is just continuing to support one another and that's personally helped me um, and that's what I would extend to all of us. Gabrielle Burkhart, KRQE Investigates. Preliminary data show just 10 percent of eligible students participated in state testing this year, which this year was optional. Testing will once again be required in the spring. You can read that full LFC report at alwaysonkrqe.com.